So this is going to be a much different review than what I brought you last week when I did a five star fabulous review of a book. This review is going to be a little bit interesting and I might not say everything the right way and I might get a little personal, but I just have a lot of feelings about the book that I'm going to be talking about today. And it really touches on a lot of my past experience and feelings and emotions. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna get through this as best we can together. So the book in question is called Set on You by Amy Leah. And this is a new release. This is an ARC review and it will be coming out um, as of this video tomorrow, this Tuesday. And I would like to thank Edelweiss and the publisher for giving me an advanced review copy for my um, honest review. So Set on You is the story of Crystal and Scott. Now Crystal is, and this word just makes me laugh every time, but she is a fitstagrammer. She does um, workout videos and stuff like that on Instagram as a curvy biracial fitness influencer. And she has been doing this so successfully that it is actually her entire career. And so she gets, you know, um, sponsorships and she has a lot of followers and she also likes to spend a lot of time in the gym. And so the story begins when she is going to her favorite gym at her favorite time and as people who are regulars places often do, she has specific places, machines, like she has a routine, right? And so she has this one piece of gym equipment that she really loves and she puts her stuff down on it, goes to fill her water bottle, comes back and finds out that this guy has stolen her squat rack. And this is like the biggest no-no in her mind. So they get off on a terribly wrong foot. He is kind of rude to her. And she just decides that this guy is just the absolute scum of the earth. And when she begins to go back to the gym, she has clients that she brings there. Somehow she keeps running into him. And to her, this guy just seems to be doing everything in the world to antagonize her. And so she is telling all her friends about this like terrible gym person who she calls Squat Rack Thief. And then her grandmother surprisingly announces that she's getting engaged and she's getting married. And this takes Crystal's entire family by surprise. They throw an impromptu engagement party. Come to find out that the grandson of the man that her grandmother is marrying is Squat Rack Thief. Of course. His actual name is Scott and he is a firefighter. He has, you know, the washboard abs. She's admitted from the first that he's incredibly attractive, but they now have to spend a lot of time together because their grandparents are getting married and Crystal is like, oh my God. So in terms of the romance, I'm sure you can see where it goes from here. Scott has to win Crystal over. Crystal has to find out that Scott is not as bad as he appeared. Tra la la, romance novel. That, for the most part, is fine. <laughs> Minus some stuff we'll talk about. However, some of the issues with this book happen around other themes. So if you do not like books that discuss body issues, body shaming, eating disorders, or stuff like that, this is not going to be the book for you. And it is also not going to be a fun rest of this review for you. So take what I've already told you, that warning, and decide for yourself whether or not you'd like to read this book. The rest of this review will discuss these themes, so this is the this is the charting territory here. So, like I mentioned, Crystal is a curvy fitstagrammer, and as we know, the internet is not kind to women. In fact, the internet is not kind to anyone, no matter your gender or your person. The internet is basically often a very terrible place, especially if you're someone like Crystal who doesn't fit, um, you know, 
racial beauty stereotypes, right? She's not a blonde, blue-eyed stick figure, and that's what she talks a lot about in the book. But she is ready to tackle those trolls and say it doesn't matter. It matters that I represent a strong body positive image for my followers who get to see from me that I can be curvy, I can love the gym, um, and I can love my own body. And that is a really major theme throughout the book. You also see, you don't see the pictures, but you see like the captions of her Instagram posts and you get selected comments. And of course you get really, really nice and positive comments, but then you also get to see these trolls leaving absolutely nasty comments on her photos about her being too fat, you know, about how it's terrible that we say, you know, curvy people are healthy when they're obviously just not whatever it is because the internet is awful. So that is included in the book and kind of shows you really what Crystal is both using her platform for but also what she is up against. I want to say straight up that this book says a lot of things that I agree with. Obviously, like I said, the internet is not a kind place. You have to really have a thick skin. Crystal deals with that throughout the book, but she also has some really great things both to say in the beginning and also things that she learns later on about loving yourself, the body that you're in, and also just, for example, the pressure of the body positive movement and how sometimes it's actually not positive to be potty positive all the time because that gives the impression that we need to love our bodies all the time and that's exhausting and also just not real and so like that's a journey that she goes on and i loved all of that i think the things that it said are really great however as someone who has had their own body issues in the past, who has dealt with some of their own struggles, this book in places made me very uncomfortable. Not necessarily because of what it was saying, but because of how it was showing it. So throughout the book, Crystal is the only curvy person, really. All of her other friends and Scott, they are all more aligned with commercial standards of beauty and all of them seem to have their life together and so as Crystal is struggling through all of these things I mean her sister she has a sister who was recently dumped but that does not seem to be as like hurtful to her as what Crystal was going through um, I think it's really just setting her up to be the next book I think in this connected series but Crystal is the one struggling with this. She is the one, you know, taking a lot of the hits from social media. She is the one, basically the only one really shown to be struggling in their life. Scott in particular is where this really begins to bug me. I have said in review after review after review where I hate the dynamic of one partner is just like a total mess and the other partner has it together and Therefore, it is the duty of this partner to like fix the other partner. And I feel like this book does a great job of showing that like, you know, Crystal's issues with her body image are, you know, they can't be fixed. There's not like a love will change everything. And therefore, because Scott loves me, I am beautiful. Like that doesn't happen, which thank God, because that's not how that works. Um, but you know, Scott's a firefighter, he has it together. And when they try to trauma compare, his way of relating to her is being bullied when he was in middle school for being scrawny. And Crystal at one point tells him that's a false equivalency, but they keep bringing it up like it's equivalent. It's not, it's not. And Scott's you know, defining characteristics are that he is um, basically going to wait for her to get her stuff together. And that was not great to me. Again, I love books where it shows that all of the humans in the story have issues and everyone is fallible. 
I just kept comparing this in my head to Denise Williams's latest book, which I reviewed a couple of months ago. And I just, it really frustrated me that Crystal was the one to be shown to have all the problems and all of the problems were often the fault of her own mental view of the world, her trust issues, her issues with her body, her inability to cope with haters, her like, ah. I understand when you're going through something like this, it may often feel like everyone else has their life together except for you and that is really hard. So that is possible that someone can read this and really resonate with that and say, yes, this was also my journey. Like I felt like I was going through all of this on my own and it was really, really hard. That was not the way that I took this storyline. I just took it as she's the only one with issues. She's dealing with it on her own. Some of this feels like mess she's created. And none of the other characters, like I said, have even their own issues. It didn't have to be their body. It didn't have to be their job. Like, if someone else had had like one issue, especially Scott, it would have felt more real. Instead, it just felt very isolating to me. Um, and it just made me feel really, really sad for Crystal and just really uncomfortable. I don't want to spoil too much of the ending, but I was already really on shaky ground with this book. And then the ending happens. And the reason that Crystal and Scott fight, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's the second occurrence of something where Scott does a thing and Crystal reacts and everyone tells Crystal she's wrong. Now, the first time that happened in the book, I was like, Ugh, I don't like it. And then as it went on, I was like, okay, I see where they're coming from. She did have a really strong reaction that might have been overkill to the situation. But that pattern repeats again when they have their fight and personally, I wasn't buying it. When romance novels are like, it's okay that they did that because they love you. I don't like it. It doesn't matter if they love you. Sometimes you should just trust the other person. Ah. And then after they fight, there is a character introduced literally just to give Crystal, like one of those like life affirming, you know, pep up speeches, immediately followed by her father, giving her another inspiring life speech about getting it together. And I was like, Oh my god. And this was to me, the culmination, right of everyone treating it like all of these issues are Crystal's issues. Does she have issues she needs to deal with? Yes. Things like trust issues, those are hers to own. But also, the third person to give her a life affirming pep. When Crystal goes, how did you deal with this? She goes, therapy. It's a process. Crystal just gets three life affirming essays, and then she's fine. It's a process. One talk from your dad is not gonna fix it. Ugh. I feel really bad about saying all of this stuff, but this book both touched on really personal issues for me, really personal memories for me, and then also dipped into some romance tropes that I can't stand. I don't think that it's a badly written book, I, it's like I said, I do believe that what it is saying about especially the body positive movement and just trying to like exist on the internet. I really thought all of that, what it said was great. I don't think that it was charting any new territory, but it was very um, affirmational. However, again, the execution for me just in a number of ways didn't work. And it made me really, really sad because there was just so much in this book that I think could have been really great. 
This is all my personal opinion. You do not have to agree with me. You can go and check it out and read it for yourself. I've read a lot of other reviews that are very positive. This is but my thoughts and my feelings and they may not be yours. So, you know, if this is your kind of book, you can always check this out from your local library. If you like the concept of this book, I really recommend, like I said, uh, the newest Denise Williams book. That got five stars for me and it was also about a curvy lifestyle blogger, but I think it just handled some of this with more nuance and that was really what I wanted from this topic. But these are my thoughts, these are my feelings, and this video is already really long. So I'm gonna stop there and I invite you to read it yourself, talk back to me, or not. I don't know, you do you, man. Here's hoping that my next review will be slightly less ranty. Thanks guys. Bye.